Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us today. Um, it's a really amazing event we have today, very informative uh, from Infotection. And of course, Erica uh, Telly of Microsoft. We lost Vivek at the moment there. Okay. Thank you, Vivek. I thought we lost you there. So, <laughs> I was just changing my background. <laughs> <laughs> so, Thank you so much for joining us. It's been uh, interesting weather in the UK today. I think I've got snow, sunshine, and hailstones in a matter of hours, one by one. So I'm joining you from Aberdeen, Scotland today. And that's that's how we have, that's the weather we have at the moment. And as we start this event, as you know, it would be nice to tell us where you're joining us from today and how the weather is like in very British fashion. Um, while we start, while we look at those chats that you have sending us messages. Ooh, sunny Edinburgh. Thank you, Alex. Um, the things that I just wanted to remind everyone, I placed the chat. So this is brought to you by IRMS um, with in collaboration with Infotection and Microsoft. What I did is on the chat, I have um, given you the link to the IRMS conference in May. Um, hopefully that you could join us for IRMS in May. So um, that would be great. And then um, one of the things that I have to remind everyone on, this is being recorded, and once um, we've ended the meeting, you will receive an automated link to the um, video of, to the recording of the event. Um, and that's it. A lot of the questions and chats that will go along, we will, all of us will be watching out for your questions in the chat, and there's also a questions tab if you wish to use that. So without further ado, let me just hand you over to Vivek and Erica. Thanks, Maria. And thank you, everyone, for joining today. I hope my voice is loud and clear and my video as well. Um, so I want to start today's session by, first of all, thanking Erica to joining me on this. Um, Erica will talk a little bit about um, the new capabilities which Microsoft uh, has released or in process of releasing in regards to extending Microsoft Purview. So I'll let her um, talk about that and then I will walk you through the rest of the session on how we're using some of those capabilities as in protection and helping customers um, automate some of their business, business workflows. So over to you, Eric. Perfect. Thanks, Vivek. Uh, so just to kind of kick off the webinar, um, I want to talk a little bit about our what we call our extensibility strategy. Um, so we highly encourage partners and customers to build on top of the Microsoft Purview platform, uh, including, of course, records management. Uh, so what does that look like? What opportunities are available for people that want to do this? Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so our strategy is in <clears throat> kind of two components. So first in the green is the areas where we really encourage partners such as Infotection and customers who wish to build their own customizations uh, to develop solutions. And then on the right in the blue uh, are the pieces that um, we will maintain ownership of um, in the for Microsoft Perfume. Excuse me. <clears throat> So um, on the blue side, uh, we'll always be managing things like what um, retention label and policy settings are available um, when there's a conflict potentially between two different labels or policies, how is that resolved? And how we um, calculate the retention period and then when the item is up for expiration. Uh, also search indexing, um, storage or actually the different storage locations that you can leverage and manage with our core retention service. 
uh, and then enforcing retention and deletion. But there's a lot of opportunity for extensibility. And Infotection's a great example of a partner that's done this very, very successfully um, and according to best practices. So we highly encourage people to build um, anything, any solutions related to their specific industry vertical or any um, specific geography or regulation based requirements. Um, or just uh, if you find that there's things that aren't available in the product that you would like to have for your records management program, uh, as long as there's a best practice supported way to develop it, we're very happy for you or partners to do that. Um, just some areas where we've seen um, partners and customers have success would be um, different types of auto classification methods. Um, so especially with some of the uh, yet to be announced APIs we're developing, uh, you'll be able to bring your own classification schema um, and use it to label items in our service. Also custom disposition review processes or anything around that, uh, or any kind of processes and actions that occur uh, at the end of the life cycle stage. So um, yeah, I just wanna reiterate, this is uh, very much encouraged by us and uh, Roberto and I are happy to look over um, any architecture plans that you have for development, uh, just to make sure it's following best practices or anything we can do to support you. Um, and then along those lines, we have a couple programs available on the next slide to uh, support you on this journey. Um, so that you don't just have to rely on public documentation only. Uh, so first is our newly launched compliance and privacy connection program. Uh, so this is open to customers, Microsoft MVPs and partners, uh, and we'll be able to provide uh, NDA roadmap briefings and information on upcoming features. Um, this is how you can also get access to any private preview programs. And then um, for partners only, not for customers, unfortunately, uh, we also have a, uh, a Yammer group in the Office 365 partners area um, where we'll make announcements about any new marketing materials or um, things that you can leverage in programs, uh, as well as some partner specific webinars. And then lastly, any time that we release new APIs, uh, we'll, we always partner with the Microsoft Graph product team uh, who technically owns those APIs and they do an incubation program, which is one of the programs Infotection just went through successfully um, to build their advanced records management solution that we'll see throughout the rest of the webinar. Um, and that is one-on-one uh, -on -one help from those team members um, where you can give your feedback, ask questions, report bugs, anything that will help you um, develop your solution. So I just like to let people know that those options are available. Um, if you are interested in extending uh, Microsoft Purview, um, following best practices like Infotection's done here. Uh, so with that, Vivek, handing it over to you. Thank you. Thanks, Erica. Um, so the next uh, 50 minutes or 40 minutes or so, um, I'm going to walk everybody through uh, what we have done as part of the extensibility options, uh, which Erica just talked about. And before I go there, I wanted to start with saying why we why we have done this. And, and one of the biggest reasons why we have extended Microsoft and created a need for extending purview and creating solutions through those extensions is that having now worked with several organizations uh, across the globe, we are coming to a realization that many customers have similar needs when looking at not just not implementing purview, but looking at purview records management from an operational governance point of view. So um, the processes, the activities which are required in order to uh, keep the system running and functioning and dealing with all the changes which come towards an organization and how they need to adjust their records management implementations 
often requires a level of investment on the operational side. So this is very much coming from an operational point of view, not as much from an implementation point of view. But we believe that Microsoft Purview does a really good job of um, being implemented um, you know, in, a, in a customer platform. So that's one, the operational governance side of things, whether it is um, how you're managing your disposition reviews and simplifying the experience and uh, the decision-making of disposition reviews, management of uh, identifying events, which are quite common, uh, cross records management, and similar scenarios where organizations have made certain choice points uh, as regards to implementing their retention classifications. They have additional requirements related to audit, reporting, et cetera, and we just we just looking at it is all common across many customers. So we don't want to go and build specifically for those customers and see um, whether those solutions can actually be leveraged as is or with minimum customizations, more configurations. So the full extensibility is built built with built with that objective in mind. Leverage low code solutions. Uh, such as Power Platform, whether it is Power Apps, Power Automate, uh, or Power BI, to provide those experiences rather than build an add-on solution which takes a footprint on your Microsoft 365 platform. So that's the overall uh, context setting. Um, before I get into some of the demonstrations I've prepared for today's session to explain what we have built and what does the solution look like and how it integrates with Purview. I just wanted to kind of quickly start and spend a couple of minutes on just an overview of information governance and just remind everyone that the, the discipline we are covering here is uh, information governance. Uh, and we're not just looking at this in context of digital media. Of course, Microsoft Purview is very much focused on the digital media. But we also know that there are paper records which exist, which organizations need to manage. Um, and again, if you have invested in Purview, if you've created your retention labels using Purview, um, what experiences we can create to simplify your visibility of paper records, lifecycle management of paper records. Uh, the second, the third element is also related to software solutions. Um, so a number of uh, customers have uh, software solutions, applications, which either require an unstructured data, a file uh, of sorts uh, to process the data, and then quite often also creates a file as an output. And quite often those files are stored on network file shares, which we know that many, of, many organizations are actually moving towards Azure or cloud, cloud uh, capabilities. A lot of them are not um, managed within SharePoint Online because of the integration which is required between applications and the file store. So again, we are building on that Microsoft vision for unified data governance. And Microsoft has announced recently that they are expanding per view governance from Microsoft 365 to multi-cloud and other storage platforms. So we, we are following that roadmap and that vision to help customers where certain information, which is outside of Microsoft 365, uh, can be managed. And the similar principles of retention management, lifecycle management can be applied to that information as well. And how can we leverage what Purview has made available today? So those are the kind of things that you've built into our solution. Um, overall, Microsoft Purview and Infotection Advanced Records Management uh, from, from our point of view includes tools and technologies to deliver the same message of helping organizations to protect and govern their information. So Microsoft 365 or Microsoft Cloud remains the central repository for enterprise information, records. Uh, retention Engine is still Purview. Um, all the heavy lifting as part of this extensibility is still done by Microsoft Purview 
and the extensibility options provide tailored experiences, not interfering with how Purview does retention management, how Purview interprets and applies governance actions such as um, immutability, marking as records, and how it supports the labeling of information, whether it is auto labeling or manual labeling scenarios. So overall building on that, it's 100% uh, compatible with Microsoft Roadmap. And why we are saying is 100% compatible is because we are part of that depth program with Microsoft. So we constantly changing uh, the features covered by Purview versus the extensible options uh, and where Purview brings those capabilities, we complement those with tailored experiences. So Microsoft 365, you get records management with E5 Purview. Uh, this extension is not uh, a replacement for E5. Um, if you do records management, you still have to use all the prerequisites which come as part of Microsoft, using Microsoft 365 and Purview and from a licensing point of view. Uh, but what you get on top of that is advanced workflows. And we show you in a demo very shortly what we actually mean by those advanced workflows and how they can uh, simplify, especially for organizations, especially in public sector, where there's significant amount of information, there's still significant amount of retention classifications where you rely on somebody to review or an external event to happen. So that really is the problem we are trying to solve. And around that, we have facilitated um, uh, unification of uh, auditing data, collecting from different systems. And I'll show you in a minute the architecture where we are really leveraging Microsoft capabilities um, to consolidate the audit data and present it back in terms of uh, reporting, dashboards, monitoring, et cetera. And while I'm on that, one of the big um, lessons for me working for uh, a customer was an outcome from an audit finding which um, directed us towards doing more with the audit data. And so while many organizations, if not all, have switched on auditing in their Microsoft 365 platform, um, many of those are also using third-party audit data stores, uh, such as Splunk or others. The feedback which we received was that that data is collected, but it isn't very clear which audit events should record managers or information managers be uh, reviewing on a regular basis to ensure that at the operational level, when records management is implemented, when your files are tagged, your emails are tagged, which events need to be monitored in order to ensure that uh, in steady state, your solution or what you have implemented is still aligned and the actions which are performed are still aligned with your policies. So on that note, uh, just the next slide, and this is the only slide which I have on retention. I've tried to simplify it, but still looks very complex. So I'm going to give it a try explaining it. So overall, um, from an application user's point of view, which is everybody in the organization, we want them to use um, the right tool for the right purpose, whether it's SharePoint, Teams, OneDrive for Business, and especially for organizations who are moving from network file shares to cloud, we're seeing that they are either using Azure File Share or Azure Blob Storage. So the interfaces are the interfaces for application users the retention records management capabilities are available to them through those interfaces. Um, but behind the scenes, um, the IT administrators work with Microsoft 365 Purview where retention labels are created, policies are created. Now that's the part which we are automating through these APIs. We have seen that many customers have either their retention classifications in Excel spreadsheets or they use third-party uh, retention softwares. And there, there's, there's several of those out there in the market. We've used one, uh, which is called Virgo, as, um, uh, as a candidate for this demo, where you could be using anything. You might as well have your retention classification sitting in a SharePoint list or somewhere else. Now, loading those retention labels for the first time is not a problem. Um, you can all do that. 
but where we are trying to bring automation is based on the regulation changes, which retention label requires a change. And operationally, when those retention classifications changes, whether it is a name, whether it is the retention period uh, or anything else, how does the technology support that? Some of, some of the capabilities are not supported by purview, but still organizations have to implement those uh, changes within their system. So for example, Purview doesn't support right now changing retention label name. Now, because of a regulation change, if you need to make a change to the name of a retention label, we, we figured that we had to write custom scripts for a customer and we quickly realized that there were a few other customers who were asking for the same thing to happen, that they couldn't go to a single interface and just say, I want to change the label name. Now that feature or capability might be on Microsoft Roadmap. I, I certainly can't say anything on this call. Maybe Erica can come off mute if she wants to say anything about that. But that's an example that if Microsoft were to in future bring the ability to change the retention label name as part of a regulation change, that's something which will be then natively supported and the footprint of that uh, capability will go from this extensibility option which we are providing. So overall, you have Microsoft 365 Purview, which manages um, lifecycle uh, governance uh, of information in Microsoft 365, which is SharePoint Exchange, Teams, et cetera. And you have Microsoft Purview, which was previously called Azure Purview, and you all have access to Azure Purview, whether you are uh, E3 or E5 or not, because uh, that's an Azure component. And that provides the ability to extend data governance from Microsoft 365 to other cloud components. So where it supports today is ability to scan your data and establish a data map. And so we're using that in context of Azure files and blob storages uh, for customers who have moved their network file shares to cloud and using that data governance to apply governance actions, whether it is um, sensitivity labels, data classifications, or we using this custom uh, component uh, through our solution, leveraging graph APIs to apply retention classifications to the files which are stored in, uh, in Azure cloud storage as well. Now behind the scenes, all of that data audit data, your metadata, and all the enrichments as you use the system, uh, user activities, uh, system activities, uh, they are all audited in the system. And we combining those audit activities, bringing that into Microsoft Sentinel, which is another product from Microsoft, and using that to create tailored experiences of letting you access those audit events in a way that it makes sense to the business. And so we are creating those tailored experiences for business administrators, not for the IT administrators, because they already have access to these administrative portals, um, you know, Sentinel, audit logs, et cetera. So from a solution point of view, no change to application users, they continue to use the user interface, uh, which they are accessing today. Uh, or in future using the Microsoft native capabilities. The IT administrators continue to use the portals, but it really is the business administrators who have work to do after these um, retention labels and governance capabilities are implemented. How do they monitor uh, these in steady state? When do items come up for disposition? How can they review them at scale? And by the way, we have the requirement to group them by either business, department, or sites. How can we view our records which are coming up for disposition in those aggregation contexts and use the information which is available in the system to be able to make those decisions? Okay, um, so the key features, um, I'm just gonna skip through this. So the key features supported, um, by our solution are uh, a universal retention connector, uh, which is built on graph APIs. And that's the starting point for most implementations. 
is where organizations are using these third party retention softwares um, and the record managers are managing retention classifications in those softwares, uh, integrate them with Microsoft Purview. So leveraging graph APIs, leveraging secure connections and application permissions, uh, make sure that any changes are made in those retention softwares uh, are updated in Microsoft Purview. And based on that, those changes are also cascaded to the information going forward in an operational state if you were to make any changes. Um, there are a number of dashboards and reports, as I said, based on the unified log which we are collecting, whether it is uh, SharePoint metadata, file properties, uh, or audit events which are collected based on user interaction with your records or just information without records, presenting that in a way that aligns with an organization's KPI on how they want to measure operationally um, what they have implemented to their compliance standards or, or information management standards. Um, there's some AI uh, integration, uh, especially leveraging the E5 trainable classifiers and the auto classification policies. So what we've observed is that we can implement the retention labels the biggest challenge is how those retention labels are applied to files and emails in the system. And the traditional way to implement that is uh, publish them, ask users to manually apply them, or set them as defaults in SharePoint sites, uh, email folders, et cetera. Uh, but we're seeing that there's more and more investment coming on the automation side, and we want to leverage that. So not only we can publish the retention labels, programmatically, but also connect your retention labels to existing trainable classifiers or content types to automatically publish those label policies. And you may have heard some announcements recently that now you can create those label policies in simulation mode. Um, so we're supporting and we're working with Microsoft to support that simulation mode as well. And you have a retention label, we can create a label policy automatically leveraging either trainable classifiers or keyword or content type based uh, auto classification policies and save them in the system in simulation mode so you can review them or we can just directly create them and publish them so that they can actively start to classify information so shifting sort of from asking the users to classify the information which they still have the control to do it to more doing it on behalf of users and finding a way by which we can improve the quality of it. And then this is the part which I've built into the demo for today is the advanced disposition management of purview records, especially the ones which require disposition review, especially where we've heard in the um, IRMS community where people want to keep um, just proof of disposition um, and the metadata which you want to keep as proof of disposition more than what is currently provided in Microsoft Purview. So you have your file properties, you have your SharePoint metadata, you may have created some custom metadata. With this extension, uh, you can tailor uh, what metadata you want to keep and how you want to keep it for how long you want to keep it uh, as a proof of disposition in addition to what Microsoft Purview stores. So. We combine what Microsoft Purview provides as a proof of disposition and on top overlay the other custom metadata and other custom attributes which seem to vary from organization to organization. Um, so just a quick uh, reply to Sarah, the AI capability, it can use syntax functionality. Uh, what we're using is the Azure uh, uh, Cognitive Services, and what we're using is trainable classifiers. So those are the two components which we are using in our solution. But of course, yes, if you're using Syntex, then it can integrate with Syntex as well. And we'll show you in the demo, um, especially on the disposition workflow, um, how we are integrating with Purview to trigger the capture of all of that metadata, which you may have already extracted using some of the mechanisms you just mentioned, like syntax. Okay, so um, 
I'm just quickly highlighting the key features here um, and the ones I would like to sort of cover in this demo uh, today. And I prepared a video so that I can get through the demo very quickly and get to the questions. Um, so what I would like to present today is um, uh, programmatically deploy retention classifications as retention labels, uh, programmatically use those AI options or auto classification options to create label policies and as a minimum, get them to a state where they are in simulation mode. You can review them, you can improve them before you make the choice to publish them to your workloads and automate the management of disposition triggers. So as an example for today's session, I'm going to show you disposition review uh, when records are eligible for disposal. Uh, we can follow up to also show you how we're using the same mechanism to simplify the uh, triggering of event and collection of data, which is related to a specific event, whether that is a contract, employee leaving the company or other events you have in the organization. Okay, so on that note, I'm going to play, hopefully the sound comes through. If it doesn't, please let me know. Um, the first video, and that first video is about retention connector, which will show you how we create retention labels especially if you have external systems. I'm gonna pause in between just to highlight the integration points between our solution and Microsoft and where the graph APIs and those extensibility options play a really important role for us to make this possible and make this reusable so that we don't have to do the same customization or same integration again and again and write a new code because that was one of the big issues we were facing. Um, across two organizations which had exactly the same requirement and we couldn't reuse what we have implemented. Multiple feature categories. These demonstrations. Can I just do a quick check with somebody uh, whether the video, yeah. oh, sorry, the audio? We can hear okay. it. We can right. hear it. Thank you. Include key elements of records management related operational processes, which are simplified and streamlined through automation and process workflows. In this demonstration, we will show you the Infotection Retention Connector, which automates your key retention classification management activities. Let's have a look at the Infotection Advanced Records Management Solution. We start with a high level overview of your most important retention classification activities. These can be accessed through the Retention Connect overview, which brings your retention classification changes into Microsoft purview, including periodic retention review activities, which often require changes to existing retention classifications already in use and applied to files and emails. The connector can integrate with Excel based retention classifications and also third-party retention software solutions like Virgo. The connector ensures your retention classifications and file plan are always accurately represented in Microsoft purview and the labeled information. The connector also provides administrative settings, which currently provide audit logs of all the retention classification changes. The roadmap includes several automation features including the ability to update retention changes on demand. Let's see this in action. We will use Virgo as an example of automation retention classification. I just want to pause at this point and just highlight that some of those charts and graphs which you're seeing, they, um, we, we're always making sure that we're bringing the elements of purview as well. So those charts, some of them exist in purview, but and are very useful, like um, you know how my records retention labels are applied manually versus automated. Uh, but record managers don't always have access to Microsoft Purview, and so it's important that what what has already been done in Microsoft Purview in terms of charts and graphs which have been created, we bring those as well here. In addition to anything else that we display about how your retention labels are used. Uh, and how the information which has retention labels applied to are shared. And as you're making changes to your retention labels over time, how those changes are accumulated, how those changes are impacted. So just wanted to make sure that if you, if you haven't been into purview, 
then um, then you might want to actually have a look at Purview because there are a number of graphs and charts which you can already use to kind of give you an idea of your top retention labels or the ones which are least used. And we're seeing that many organizations are driving a lot of um, operational um, you know, behavior changes in terms of how these retention labels are used. We will start by updating an existing finance management retention classification as part of our ongoing retention review due to updates to an existing legislation. This includes a number of categories which require mapping to Microsoft purview when creating a retention label. This matrix provides a mapping between your retention classification fields and Microsoft purview. At present, these are configured in our solution to automatically create a retention label as per this mapping. However, in future, you will be able to manage this mapping through the Infotection solution. So again, sorry, just a quick pause. These are the fields which Purview supports through the integration. So we're very close. You're not trying to do anything clever with the integration. Make sure that what's supported in the APIs um, is supported by the integration. And as the APIs improve, we then bring more supportability uh, to how retention labels and retention label related activities can be manipulated in the system. The face. The ability to manipulate the mapping is still dependent on the retention label properties, which can be applied in purview based on Microsoft design limits. Let's go ahead and update the retention value of this classification and save. Now that we have updated our retention classification, the system will automatically sync these changes with Purview and reflect the changes in the Infotection dashboard for the retention connector. For this demonstration, we will use the retention connector settings to issue an on-demand sync of the changes. Let's have a look at the connector settings on the Infotection solution where we can run on-demand sync. Once the sync completes its process, the corresponding retention label will be updated in Microsoft Purview. Let's have a look at the changes updated in Microsoft Purview. We can now access records management in Purview and see that our corresponding retention label is updated with the new retention. This will also take care of updating all the existing files labeled with this retention label ensuring that our records remain updated with our retention changes. We can also view our retention label properties and can verify that all values are exactly the same as per the retention classification mapping. We will also be able to audit all such changes through the connector settings interface, which provides the demonstration of Infotection's advanced records managed Microsoft purview able to audit all such changes through the connector settings interface, which provides a filtered view of the purview audit logs. We can download these audit log. Oops, my apologies, it keeps restarting. Um, the one thing I just wanted to show quickly, and I will actually just pause on that point. Um, is uh, interface, which is actually this point. And sorry, I clicked um, wrongly on the slider. Now, this is the part which Microsoft announced, and I think Erica announced at the IMS as well, is where you can decide what happens at the end of a retention period. Uh, so previously, you could, you could run a multi-stage disposition. But now with the Power Automate integration, you can decide a uh, custom flows. So for example, you could, um, you could do a disposition review, you could do a disposition review and archival review and, and select the way you want to tailor your review experience. And that's the component which we've used to create the tailored experience, create um, uh, customized emails, a collection of metadata and information about the files to provide more and more information to the reviewers who can hopefully then use that information to make those decisions. And that's the interesting part I want to show you in the, in the next demonstration, 
But this is a very key integration point without which we wouldn't be able to provide those tailored experiences. And again, this is a very low code solution. So uh, this is something you can do it yourself as well, um, is to leverage that integration with Power Automate. Provides a filtered view of the purview audit logs. We can download these audit logs, which will provide us a complete set of retention label related changes taken place in Microsoft purview, including any changes our compliance administrators have made directly in purview portal. This completes the demonstration of retention connector. In summary, the retention connector provides the ability to create and update retention classifications with full auditor version changes to meet regulatory compliance requirements. Thank you. Okay, on the next slide, I'm going to also show another demonstration. Now this demonstration is starting from where you have applied the retention labels, you have integrated the retention connectors and uh, and then using that to manage the operational scenarios when records need to be reviewed before disposition. And again, this is something which we're using, using that Power Automate integration to collect information and through that create tailored experiences um, for reviewers who otherwise would get um, notifications. They will have to go into purview to review uh, the information by retention label, but this Power Automate integration, we are able to provide them different views. For example, by site, by uh, organization structure, by responsibility, etc. Uh, Vivek, before you, you hit, I think we have, just in case the context of the question is lost, um, we have a question from Wendy Stone. Can you insert keywords to prevent removal of documents from a variety of source? And from Sarah as well, why wouldn't the Power Automate capability work with Microsoft on this position without infotection? It so the so question response to Sarah, absolutely, you don't need the infotection solution um, to work with Power Automate. You can build those Power Automate experiences uh, yourself. It's just that we've, we've built those experiences already and we are able to very quickly deploy those experiences but yes, the Power Automate integration is available for anybody uh, to use. You have no, no restriction to just come through an infotection solution. Wendy's question, I'm not sure. So maybe, I'm not sure if Wendy has the ability to come off mute, maybe ask the yeah. question. Yep, Wendy, can you use your audio if you wish to provide a little bit more info on your question? Okay, or you can add some information. Um, we'll proceed and then we'll watch out for the additional information you'll provide, Wendy. Yeah, okay, sure. I'll keep an eye on the on the chats as well. Thank you, Maria. So I'm going to play the next video, and as usual, I will I will stop at specific points to highlight where the Microsoft extensibility options are being used in our solution. Look at the infotections extensions to Microsoft purview for streamlining the records disposition processes. The three biggest challenges we have heard from the record management community are as follows. First is the ability to assign and track responsibilities for review of records eligible for disposal and manage these reviews at scale. We are talking when several thousands of records require review from asset owners working across multiple business units. How can we leverage the information available within our records, their workspaces and the user activities to drive meaningful decisions from asset owners? Second is the ability to aggregate all records which relate to specific external events to occur before a disposition decision can be completed. A good example would be to identify all records which relate to a particular contract based on a contract number. In some cases, such records do not have a unique identifier for an event, 
hence making it very difficult for record managers or asset owners to identify and manage life cycle of such records. Third, is the ability to manage the audit and the metadata related to a record when it is disposed. While Microsoft Purview provides a proof of disposition per record, it is not practical to expect Purview to understand all the customer-specific metadata or audit events, which is often expected to be retained together with the proof of disposition. All of the above. Uh, just a quick pause. The uh, proof of disposition is um is, is something where we are complementing what purview does so again um as sarah um you know alluded in her question uh, you get a proof of disposition with purview if you're happy with that that's absolutely fine but if you have additional requirements where you need to keep sharepoint max data additional file properties etc uh, we extend that using, again, the Graph API options to collect all of that data and keep it for long-term audit purposes for you to be able to prove how record was disposed. Graph scenarios have different levels of impact to organizations. And regulatory commitments to demonstrate record compliance. For example, an organization which has automated all of their record dispositions will not need to worry about the first two scenarios, but may still have a need to maintain an acceptable set of metadata and record audit to meet the proof of disposition requirements. Therefore, Infotection has been working with Microsoft Engineering to leverage the purview extensibility options. We have developed configurable experiences to address varied levels of complexities across the three challenges for our customers. Let's have a look at the following example. The finance department of a government agency has identified retention labels which require review of the records before disposal. In this instance, the records must be reviewed by finance asset owners and they are defined as the SharePoint and team site owners. The finance department also wants only a quarterly notification on records eligible for disposal. The biggest challenge for the finance operations is that despite assigning the responsibilities, the disposition reviews do not happen and neither do asset owners have sufficient information to decide on which records to keep or dispose. Let's have a look at the experience of records review with the Infotection extension to Purview. Just a quick pause here to show you that, um, again, records uh, eligible for disposal, um, and that eligibility is calculated by Purview. Using the Power Automate integration, we are able to get all of those notifications in our solution and uh, accumulate those uh, notifications. And using this interface, we're able to offer then record managers or asset owners or business to configure how often they would like to receive these notifications. So shifting from receiving notifications as items expire versus defining when you would like to review uh, the notifications. And by the way, um, don't send the notifications for every single file or email. When we receive the notification, do that as a digest, as a summary, and provide some meaningful information in the email to encourage uh, record managers or business reviewers or asset owners to make decisions as part of the information that they receive. I will start with showing the inbox of a finance asset owner. I have received an email which summarizes the details of records available for review. These are the records from workspaces where I am the assigned workspace owner. We can also leverage other methods to assign ownership. For example, by organization structure, by retention label, by site metadata, or even by job title. I also have access to a chart which provides a distribution of these records across my SharePoint and team sites. 
I recognize these sites and I can use the adaptive card in the email to complete my review without leaving my inbox. The adaptive card can capture my comments and also my approval to start the disposal process of displayed records. Again, you can do this all by yourself. Um, this is all uh, power platform uh, capabilities. Um, we just we just uh, configured it already ready for use. Uh, so that's the that's the only difference. Um, the disposal of the information and collecting that information from let's say in this case this reviewer in the finance department. Uh, the orchestration of that, of let's say all the 13,999 records, if they are to be disposed, the signal then goes back to purview. So this is the API integration through which our solution is providing this kind of experience where you have access to charts and graphs in your email. From the email, you can decide, you can add notes, you can uh, provide more information, but the heavy lifting again of disposing those records is done by purview. I can also view more details about my records, and this will take me to a personalized dashboard to leverage more filters to support my review process. Let's say I know that FS strategy and risk sites shouldn't have anything which I want to keep. I can quickly filter on all eligible records. So again, this is, um, based on that Power Automate integration, when Purview uh, knows a particular file is eligible for disposal, using that Power Automate integration, we can trigger a Power Automate flow, and you saw those are three Power Automate flows. Behind the scenes, each one of those Power Automate flows goes to the file, collects all the information about that file, which site it is in, uh, what are the properties of that site, and any other custom metadata you've created in SharePoint Online collects all of that, updates in our database, and then populates this dashboard automatically. So regardless of whether you are using uh, information type, for example, as a site metadata, or something else which your users have locally created at a library level, let's say using syntax or some other mechanisms, it will scan all of that data, put that into the database, and in this dashboard, provides a much more contextual way for people to uh, view their records which are eligible for disposal. You know, compared to just looking at them by retention label, of course, you can look, look at them by retention label as well. I have now two options. First, I can approve disposition of all eligible records. Second, I can view all records in a list together with the metadata and ability to perform advanced investigation. So the idea here is that by applying those filters from 14,000 odd records, I now have access to some filters, some information through which I can distill it down to let's say 5,000. I can define low risk information, which I might be more comfortable disposing um, at an aggregation level compared to disposing the full 14,000. So we start with giving the full information with the charts and graphs, encouraging somebody to make decisions in the email, failing that, come to the dashboard where you can apply filters, distill it down, and failing that, there's, there's more layers to come as part of that review process, where at some point, uh, before somebody starts to view information file by file, our objective is that they would have some level of comfort to make decision through an aggregated view of information and avoid going file by file. On these records, not only I can view additional information about my records, but I can also apply a filter to find information with potential personal data. I know that any expired record with personal data should be disposed and I can do that by simply selecting all such records in my current view. I can also request for other governance actions to be performed, including extend retention, change the retention label, and even submit for a further review. In summary, I have now access to a multitude of dimensions I can use to aggregate my records and perform actions at scale. Finally, 
All actions are fully audited and as an asset owner, I can view all my actions, including the proof of disposition, which includes all the metadata associated with my records. As you have seen above, we are able to significantly simplify the experience of an asset owner and leverage the insights to drive informed decision making. So this is the part where you, as a business reviewer, have access to all the records where you have made the decision to um, dispose them or archive them as per your organization workflows. So, so this is the part where we keep all of that information, all of those decisions, in addition to your purview proof of disposition for you to be able to uh, provide more audit responses uh, in future. And you can decide, you can set your organization policy that these advanced um, proof of disposition, how long do you want to keep them for? So again, not replacing what Purview does, uh, but simply extending that, um, realizing that every organization has their own set of metadata and that difference of metadata across all organizations is something that we could handle as part of this solution um, in addition to what uh, Purview already captures, which is the minimum set of metadata, which is consistent across all organizations. But this factors in that you have some custom metadata, which you might also want to keep in addition to what is already collected. Speaking. Infotection extension to Purview provides several such configurable experiences to support a similar process for managing review of events. One such example you might want to consider is leverage this experience to potentially support workflows which require a record to be archived or sent to national archives at the end of its retention period. I can cover the details of workflows related to managing events and other pre-configured review experiences in a separate session, but for now I will conclude this demonstration. Thank you. So I included the National Archives because that's quite an interesting one. I've been doing quite a lot of work with public sector and it's something which I'm sort of quite keen to explore and also get some feedback. Um, you know, there is, there is a possibility where how records are submitted to National Archives at the end of the retention period, how the cleaning happens within Microsoft 365 tenant to make sure that we are doing that handover properly. Um, at present, what we've done is we've taken it as far as archiving it. So if you if you have an archiving strategy, certain type of records, once they come to the end of life cycle, and that's very important, we don't want to take records out while they're active in their life cycle, not through our solution. So always actions at the end of the life cycle, record is eligible for disposal, but according to your retention classification, that record needs to be moved to archive or an archive storage. And you might have an archival solution, you might not have an archival solution, but this provides you the ability to perform those sets of tasks which require downloading the file, uploading it into the archive solution, making sure you get the confirmation that all the metadata, all the files are all transferred correctly, it's there in the archive platform, and then issue the what Microsoft calls as a compliance delete or a disposition action back into purview so that those records which are disposed after archive can actually be removed from the system. And by the way, as part of that, you know, log that into your audit log so that you can prove it later on that not only you dispose the record when it was supposed to be, but the transition or the transfer to the archives was done it uh, following a certain process. And here is the audit log to prove it. I see there are a few questions. So Maria, should we take a pause and take those questions? Yes, yes, please do. I just, uh, there's a new one from Sarah. Okay, I'm just reading Wendy's. Uh, I think Erica has responded to. Yep, Wendy's. Erica has responded to, to Wendy's question, unless you want to. To further explain. 
Okay, so while people are typing questions, I'll pause again. Uh, but those are the two uh, capabilities I wanted to show. Um, hopefully that was useful. I have a couple of more slides. Um, I wanted to refer to a few things. Um, from Nikki, where is the data stored in the client? Um, so we either offer that as a software as a service, which means in, in protection subscription, um, but we also work with highly regulated organizations. They prefer to host all the data within their Azure subscription. So, so we follow that and make sure that either of the options are available. Um, so hosting it within a customer's Azure subscription, make sure that all the data, metadata, uh, which we are collecting, all the business processes or the orchestration which we are implementing stays between your Microsoft 365 and Azure subscription. That was Nikki's question. Nikki, if that answers your question, great, but please feel free to ask any follow-up questions. Okay, so this is um, sort of the final slide for me and before I pause for more questions. Um, and if I have a little bit more time left, I'll, I'll be happy to kind of show a few more things in the solution. Um, what I'm really excited about this solution that first of all, it's very well received uh, by the customers uh, where we have implemented uh, this capability. It simplified a ton of operational complexities which customers have to deal with. And, and of course, also the support we have received from Microsoft, you know, Erica and Roberto in, in reviewing the architecture to make sure that we, we stay on that track of always aligned with Microsoft roadmap and use this extension truly to complement Microsoft purview where customers have those additional needs uh, or which often lead to them thinking about, oh, should we write a script for this or a script for that? Um, those are the kind of situations we are trying to address and kind of move away from those custom scripts and have some of these low code solutions which can be quite quickly deployed to your platform. Um, the other things uh, quickly wanted to mention is the auditing part. So that's the second point I'm really excited about is use of uh, Sentinel. Uh, as part of this solution. So not only capture the unified audit log data, and, and as I referred to the audit finding uh, about uh, how audit data is used, it's, it's very difficult for uh, a business manager or an information manager to go, unless you are actually uh, you know, part of the litigation or audit team, to actually go into the audit and constantly look for activities to monitor. So this part is really something we, I'm really thankful to some of the customers who have collaborated and provided inputs into how they would like to see those audit events and what kind of audit events make sense from a compliance and to respond to audit findings point of view. Um, and all of that is actually going from an architecture point of view into your Microsoft native uh, capabilities such as Sentinel and in Sentinel, you are collecting audit data from other implementations as well. So it gives us the opportunity to also bring in other audit information, other context to your information, not just about how record labels are applied or when records are disposed, but how people are, for example, sharing your records, who try to download your record, et cetera, by bringing in some of those wider Microsoft security capabilities to provide you with that wider view, which often we just look at, yes, we've applied the label, now the life cycle is managed, it comes to the end of its life cycle and gets disposed or it gets reviewed, et cetera. Um, and, and that combining the audit information and presenting it back in a meaningful way was one of the tough challenges we faced because the amount of data which gets collected in Microsoft platform is enormous. And picking specific bits out of it and presenting that in a meaningful way um, was, was really difficult. So hope this feature of collecting the audit data, presenting it like this, the way we are in the form of dashboards, um, 
provides a simpler experience to people who otherwise would either not go into these audit logs or these audit logs will just collect it into those external um, you know, audit log systems, including, including Sentinel being one of them. Um, just keeping an eye on the questions. So Sarah has a point, uh, archives local government would be depositing day for permanent retention with local archive services. Uh, yeah, that's, that's something I've also heard Sarah uh, working with some public sector where some of those records, whether they have permanent retention, et cetera, they at some point need to be uh, submitted to archive services and each organization has their own way of submitting. In some ways, it's easier to submit paper records. You just send them, but digital records, um, how they're sent, I'm, I'm really hoping to work with some of those organizations and also National Archive to see, can we streamline that process of submitting those records over to National Archive in a way that is compliant. Um, so yeah, finally, uh, if anybody is interested, uh, we've been running a number of pilots with some early adopter customers, UK and other regions as well. Uh, we will be opening up this solution to my other Microsoft partners. So we don't want InfoTection to be the only partner who brings these solutions to customers. So if you have existing partners in your organization um, around um, late March, early April, um, we will be opening this up uh, for partners to use as part of their services, especially to manage services partners. Uh, often we find that when we implement records management to customers, the support of that goes to um, another organization who provides managed services for your wider Microsoft 365 support. So we're hoping that providing these kind of tooling to those teams would prevent and make, make sure that their operations are efficient. Uh, Vivek, um, I have another question from Nikki, uh, the estimator for Azure Storage. Uh, yes, we do have. <laughs> this is a this is a very very. This has been a very challenging thing for us to do the calculation based on consumption. But we have finally come up with a model which makes sense, and we can explain it to customers in terms of how much they will be paying to Microsoft on Azure consumption. Again, we try to keep it. Cost is one of the biggest factor on my mind especially in public sector when organizations are already paying for E5. Um, you know, this is, this is an added component on top. So we want to keep it as lean as possible, as much as aligned to out of the box capabilities. But yeah, Nikki, we, we do have a, we do have an estimator. It's not, it's not as sophisticated as on our web page, but we'd be happy to share it with you if you need, if you need to do your own calculations. Sorry, Maria, did I miss any other questions? No, I think that's it. Sarah was just trying to explain that, that her comment was actually uh, split between both. Uh, so it's it's the deposit. So her complete question is just as a feedback. I am think I am right in saying central UK government would deposit with national archives, local government, NHS, would be depositing day for permanent retention with local archive services. But I think I think you've covered that already. Yes, yeah. And that's a that's a really interesting area for me, especially in the UK public sector. I've been working with a few public sector departments um, where we've implemented records management retention labels. It's applied to files, the time when those records need to be submitted is sort of like 10 years, 20 years from now. And we want to make sure that that connection, that transfer mechanism is established so that as people move in, in 20 years time, uh, you know, there is at least some process established through which record identification and the transfer of records can be managed. Um, and then finally, um, we are also trialing the pricing options at the moment. Um, all of this I've just showed you today 
uh, it will be available through Microsoft Marketplace. Uh, we'll publish that link in some time. We expect that to happen in two weeks time. Um, if you are interested in a proof of concept with, with this and just to understand, you can register your interest using that link um, on the top, which is in protection.com slash POC, which will give you a couple of options. And one of them would be uh, in protection advanced records management. We'd be happy to talk more about that with you. Uh, and I think that covers. Uh, Erica had um, a couple of links. I know Erica has uh, dropped because she has to go to another meeting. So I'll just run through these. These are some of the links which you probably all have access to. Uh, but just a reminder, the slides will be, I think the slides will be shared. Uh, Maria, if I'm not wrong, so you can access these links. There's a ton of information Microsoft has already provided about um, documentation, APIs, documentation, and also you can get a free test environment uh, from Microsoft to try out the Purdue capabilities. Yes, uh, we will have them in the IRMS uh, site for download. Okay. Uh, how am I doing with time, Maria? I think I have I gone over or we... No, you're, we still, have... you're still okay. We still, we have, how many more minutes? 15 or so minutes. Okay. Right. So, okay. Then, then it's okay. Fine. Uh, I think that's all I had to present. Um, so I've, I've quite quickly run through my slides. Um, now open to any other questions. I'll just quickly run through uh, or any other ideas. Any other suggestions also are very welcome because a lot of this, what we have done is actually based on the feedback we I've been hearing on the IRMS roundtables and then following on with um, customers, organizations after that roundtable to kind of discuss and go more into the details on what kind of solution would actually help and add value to people who are already using Purview. I think, Kuljit, so you don't you don't keep on typing, why don't you uh, just ask Vivek, because it's a very good question that you're writing right now. If you um, go on audio and, and ask Vivek, Vivek all your questions, that'll be great. Uh, Ruth, So I'll, I'll, I'll respond right. from the top. Uh, let me just read through Ruth's question. Yes. Uh, and working on how East Sussex County Council can easily transfer their digital content. Uh, yeah, we'd be happy to talk to you and sort of see how that is happening and uh, Ruth. So yeah, please feel free to reach out um, if you want Maybe to share some that. ideas. Yep. Drop your email on the chat for everybody's reference. Oh, yes. Well. Then Kuljit has a number of questions. So that's my email address. Um, very happy to have follow up conversations, Ruth, with yourself. Um, not with an intent to deploy the solution, but really one of my um most important topics right now is to understand how that transfer happens for digital preservation uh, by the way one thing i didn't mention is that um we are also looking at integrating with other archival platforms um so preservica is one which comes to mind and connecting these disposition processes uh, with those archival platforms where we can use their APIs and their API integration to do that transfer. So for example, if the National Archive is using a specific digital preservation platform, which isn't Microsoft platform, then those are the kind of areas which I'm really looking at collaborating to see how we can help organizations to streamline that submission process. Okay, Kuljeet's question. Um, make sure that I'm picking up um, one of the motivations for managing dispositions 
thousand retention label limit and per view. Uh, need to specify disposition participants upfront and cannot dynamically. Yes, yeah. so so that's the part actually. I mean, you know, if you have thousand retention labels, um, one of the first things we say as part of our consulting is, can we review those? Where can we simplify those? Many organizations are going down that path, but of course we appreciate that you know in some cases it's just not practical. So this power automate integration which we've developed. It allows you to kind of create your retention labels in purview and then decide later on um, who those uh, disposition participants would be and how would you want to um, structure them, right? So if you have different departments and if you have reviewer per department, you could configure in our solution and say, this is the organization structure, and this is how we identify our organization structure within Microsoft 365. And based on those, those reviewers can be organized, and based on that, they will review, they will get the tailored emails. Uh, and the other, the other uh, key part of this solution is that the same retention label might be used in different departments, but people only see the records which are assigned to them. And that is by based on sites or organization structure. So we do that orchestration of making sure that we don't show people all the files which are in the retention label. We only show records which are relevant to people in that context of retention label plus the other dimensions. Okay, um, um, Catherine as well. Catherine's question. So actually the business classification scheme, I would love to hear a little bit more from Catherine about this, but um, the Virgo solution, which I showed you at the beginning, um, I've seen many organizations are using those type of solutions to create their business classification scheme within those solutions. And, and that's where we're building that integration to make sure that those business classification schemes are reflected in Microsoft 365. And that also makes sense in some cases where your records are not only in Microsoft 365, they might be in other applications. And in purview, you can only create a file plan for information which is managed within Microsoft 365. So if you have records in Azure files, uh, SAP, other applications, and Microsoft 365, then there are solutions like those which exist. And that's why we are not reinventing that wheel because we know that those solutions do a decent job of providing your business classification scheme. Um, our, our job is to make sure that whatever you do in those systems can be easily integrated with Microsoft Purview and you don't have to do it twice. So I'd be happy to talk to you about those business classification scheme solutions. Uh, Kuljeet's second question, Power Automate allows a way to manage such dispositions externally. Organizations may need to build custom or buy a pre-baked solution to manage these dispositions, which both incur additional costs. Yes, and, and that's our objective is to, is to provide this solution uh, which comes pre-baked, uh, pre-configured, where you can create your uh, own configurations, uh, but still extending it. And yes, cost is a cost is a factor, and we are trialing that cost right now with our early adopter customers who have E5, um, and we'd be happy to talk to others as well uh, to get some more feedback on, especially if you're spending money on E5 how much investment would you have to make uh, in writing all of those customizations yourself versus buying something like InfoTraction Solution, which uh, solves that problem through some pre-configurations. I think Catherine uh, comment, yep. Yes, Catherine. So, uh, you know, I'm 
I'm happy to show you um, Virgo as a follow up. So my my email is in the chat. If you are interested, I'd be happy to. And yes, of course, you know the shift is increasingly towards Microsoft for sure. Um, but the point I'm making is that you you won't always have all your records in Microsoft 365. You will have some records, um, you know, in other applications as well. And you know, how do you manage the file plan for those applications and which retention labels apply there? Um, you know, that's something which we are looking at as a forward looking view. Um, but yes, for Microsoft 365 information, Purview does a decent job. It has additional properties on business classification schemes. But yes, there are other add ons available through which you can you can further expand on it. So I, I, I can I can offer you uh, uh, a quick demo of um, Virgo as a follow up. But I'll leave that with you. Uh, reach out to me if you need to. Okay, I think I think that's all our questions, Vivek. So um, I just want to repeat to everyone again that the recording of this will be automatically shared with you via an automated email with a link to the recording. If you miss that, because that has a life cycle of its own, um, IRMS will make it available via the IRMS YouTube channel. And Vivek? I just want to say thank you. I've, um, I hope I've answered all of your questions. Uh, I hope this made sense. I uh, just want to say thank you for all of your feedback uh, over the past several months based on which we have produced something like this. And uh, I'd be happy to take follow-up questions um, in the remaining time or or afterwards as a follow-up. And I join the IMS cab on a regular basis. So I look forward to connecting with all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Um, thank you for con your continued support. And we'll continue to provide um, these informative uh, sessions for everyone as well. Thank you.